If you've ever looked closely at a stagnant pool of water during the summer, you might have noticed these strange little wrigglers. They can be hard to see, especially if the water's green and murky, but they're actually intricate and fascinating little creatures. And you may be surprised to discover that they are in fact baby mosquitoes. Now I get it, not everybody loves mosquitoes. At best, they can be annoying, buzzing around all up in your face and leaving itchy bites. And at worst, they can carry fatal diseases like malaria, dengue fever and Zika. But they're not all bad. There are literally thousands of mosquito species worldwide and only a few are blood-sucking carriers of disease. Many are content to feed on nectar and nutritious plant juices. And just like their insect cousins, the butterflies and moths, mosquitoes go through a fairly miraculous metamorphosis throughout their lives. It starts with tiny eggs laid on the surface of water. Those eggs hatch into larvae, which spend all of their time underwater, feeding on algae and growing up to be big and strong, just like a moth or butterfly caterpillar. But these larvae have a rigid exoskeleton that doesn't easily expand as they grow. So they'll shed their skin, molting several times throughout their larval lives, each time becoming bigger and more complex. Each of these larval stages is known as an instar, and mosquitoes develop through four instars over the course of about a week. Then, just as a caterpillar will transform into a chrysalis, the mosquito larva will also transform into a comma-shaped pupa in the water, before emerging as a beautiful adult mosquito, complete with wings and piercing mouthparts ready to take to the skies in search of nectar or blood. Now, I recently captured a few of the larvae while I was emptying my parents' pond, and I've taken the opportunity to get a closer look at them while they develop through their larval stages. In the water, they tend to hang out at the surface because they need to be in contact with the air in order to breathe. So they're quite literally hanging, head down and rear end up, siphoning the air into their bodies via their butts. And the long tube at their rear end is called a siphon for that very reason. That leaves their heads free to do the important job of eating, which they do all the time. Except that is when they get a fright and they need to make a quick getaway. Without legs or fins or any way of propelling themselves sensibly, they just contort their bodies this way and that and wriggle away. It might look silly, but it's actually pretty effective. With a little magnification, we can see their intricate anatomy even closer. They've got a bulbous head with two simple eyes and antennae for detecting movement and potential threats. And they have several layers of mouth brushes, perfectly suited for sweeping tiny algal particles in towards their gut. The head is attached to the thorax, and then the segmented abdomen, which is the part that twists and contracts to help the larvae wriggle away from danger. While it's still, you can see a pulsating organ that runs the length of the abdomen. That's the insect equivalent of a heart and circulatory system. And at the end, the abdomen splits into the tubular siphon that connects to the water surface, and a final segment with anal glands and gills. Finally, the whole body is covered in an elaborate array of fine hairs, called CT, that are sensitive to touch. I always find it incredible that such intricate anatomy can be so neatly packaged into an animal that's just a few millimetres long and which will completely transform in a matter of days. And speaking of transformations, since these larvae molt and shed their exoskeletons every few days, I managed to take a closer look at one of those molts before it decayed away in the water. A lot of the same anatomy is still visible, including the mouth brushes, tubular circulatory organs and bristly CT. But you can see where the growing larva has extracted itself from its too tight clothes via a split and a small opening in the back of the head case. Now the discarded skin will gradually rot away, but not before it becomes a base of operations for other microscopic animals like rotifers to filter and sift to the algae and detritus. To rotifers, and to most people too, mosquitoes and their larvae may all seem the same. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. But there are three and a half thousand species of mosquito worldwide, and at least 36 in the UK alone. Telling them apart is a job for true mosquito enthusiasts, often based on particular features of the fourth and final larval instar, like how many bristles are on the head or anal segment, or whether the siphon is long, short, or absent entirely. Now, I may be enthusiastic, but I'm no mosquito expert, and some of the classifications are a little too fine for my eyes, especially when they won't stay still but I think these guys belong to the genus Culex, and possibly the species Culex pipiens. 
Culex pipians are the most common mosquito in the UK and are sometimes known as the common house mosquito. And while most people would prefer them not to be a common sight in the house, this species is actually more of a nuisance to birds than it is to humans, with the adults seldom travelling more than a few hundred metres from where the larvae developed. So the next time you spot a mozzie, spare a thought for the intricate larval lives it's lived, before you gently invite it to buzz off. Thank <laughs> you.